Hello my little bricklings, JS Bricks here with another review for you guys. Today we're looking at set number 21319, the uh, Lego Friends Central Park Review. This set retails for 60 USD, so about 60 pounds in the UK and something euros. And has 1,070 pieces plus 7 minifigures. Now of course this set is a Lego Ideas set and it's based off the Central Park Cafe from friends and yeah i think it's a pretty great set in general i don't know why that's the wrong way around and yeah it's a pretty great set has some awesome minifigures and has fun of the show i really like it so you know what we're gonna do first we're not gonna start with the minifigures today today we're gonna start with the cafe because i think it's a really good build and with all the figures moved and put off to the side over there we can actually take a look at the calf, and yeah, it's pretty amazing as a build. Like you can see, it's got all this nice detail. If I can, you know, it's got some pretty good details. And yeah, let's start as we should from the back because I think there's some hidden details at the back. Okay, I think the first thing you want to take note of at the back. Is this pretty amazing seating? Okay, where's my finger, my jigger? This right. I've lost the um. I'll be better. Never mind. This bit right here at the back. I'm um, spinning around at the back. You can actually see it is somewhat built in to the wall. And yeah, that's a really clever idea for seats. You can see that it is elevated off the floor by one stud just here. And yeah, if you're wondering if you can actually sit figures in there, and how many, um, well, if we take Hobo Bill. Oh yeah, there's the channel mascot, by the way, Hobo Bill, that's his name. You can sit him pretty comfortably there. Um, there's a little flower pot. Ooh, flower pot needs fixing. Yeah, there's a little flower pot. A pretty nice build for a, um, torch back there. Like... I think this is a really nice build for, like, a, you know, what do you call it, candle. And, yeah, you could sit him right there, nice and comfortable. You can actually wedge him into the corner a bit there. And let's take Jim Gordon, not the Jim you're thinking of. But this one, you can actually, it's very difficult with one hand because there's no studs, fit two figures there. Fairly nicely, actually. And yeah, there's, um, you get past the sign, there's a nice printed... I mean, sticker, yeah, I think that's a sticker, yeah, sticker there for a, um, you know, just a, just a poster. There's a window there, and a l amazing sticker that just says, Live Tonight, BB Buffet. And that's, of course, Smelly Cat, the song that she never stops singing in the show. And yeah, I think that's a really good, e you know, just, there's not as many Easter eggs in here as there was in the original, like, idea, but nevertheless, it's pretty good. There's, of course, this service sign. Which I don't remember being in the show, but I haven't watched it in a while, so yeah, you know. And I really do like how that's connected on just by that, you know, piece, the the um pole piece there. And from a distance, it doesn't it actually looks like it's flowing, and I really like that. Of course, along the walls, you've got oops. Some cups. Oh, blimey. It's a bit difficult. The tripod's not really designed for this. You've got some cups along the walls there. And actually, what I really like about this back section, and why I want to show it at first, was some of the was some of the nice builds like this curtain build here. This build right here for the curtain that's been pulled back is amazing. I actually like it. And of course, there's a door, which is the back door. Is that that way? See from the back here. There's not much there. You can actually see how they connected some of the roofing there. And yeah, not much here. Nice window though. Actually, a really nice window there. And spinning it back round to the inside. And moving forward. There's a nice little carpet design here. Which has some chairs. Um, just these little stool looking chairs, really. Nothing too special. They're using the telescope piece in black times four to hold them up like that. With, of course, a, a really nice table there. And again, we'll take Bob and Gordon show you what it looks like with a figure sitting on like that and to give you an idea how tall that is 
Unfortunately, it is a bit ridiculous how high that is, because if I stand a figure next to him, oops, it's very difficult when you've got like one hand on a tripod. That, yeah, there we go. You can see it's a bit of a ridiculous height, but I think it really works. Plus, you're not really going to have figures sitting there. The main logo we sat here, which we'll get to in a minute. So the next thing I want to talk about is actually is this amazingly stellar design for the actual bar, like what bar? Um, cafe area. Um, for starters, just looking at that amazing detail. The way they designed this was amazing, like you see from the top. It's got a pretty nice curve to it. And again, just looking at the details I managed to get in here, because this isn't one smooth touch surface. We use the service sign, actually. That doesn't look right there. You can see there's some glass there, and these really nice indentations that go all the way along to the back side. Um, there's a little cookie jar with some cookies in. A cups, cups, and if I can pull it out safely, Ah, there you go. There's this pretty nice build for a till that I really like. Again, you can actually kind of see how they did that. And from the back side, there's not really much to see down there. It's more of how they did it. But what's really amazing about this is that coffee machine. That coffee machine is such an amazing build. Like, you can see all the... Where did my pointy go? There's one part of it. Give me a sec. Right, oh, I need a... Uh, I kind of nicked this idea from Jam Bricks of having a pointy because <laughs> it's very difficult getting here. Oh yeah, by the way, you can actually remove most of the seating, which we'll get to in a minute. But yeah, heading back in here, you can see, you know, it's got this nice grate here for in case you spill it. There's some coffee cups back here, and just all this detail. It's massive, it's big, but it looks amazing. And of course, there's little details in there. Even little detail down there, which is just amazing. A nice use of the um, diamond piece on the clip stud thing. Some leaves, skates, no idea what they're meant to be for, a genie lamp. And again, just this nice wooden detail. And again, there's loads of lunch back there. And to give you an idea of what that looks like, we will take Gunter. Can't remember how his name is, Gunter or Gonter? And stick it back there, and you can see. Everything looks really good. And if we spin it back around to the interior, just to show you what it looks like with the sofas removed, get a nice big feel for the space. Now, I'm actually going to put this one back. As you can see, it just slides in. Which, actually, if I pop that back out, you can see the pretty amazing way they managed to get that carpet design. And I think it's really clever what they did. And again, this snot technique, Stoll's not on top, was really great. And then the way they just, you know, just simply slide it in. No hassle. Like that. It's pretty spectacular. Now, of course, coming around to the side here, I have had to remove a couple pieces to get that nice shot of the cafe. Because you can't really get in there. Um, there's this nice umbrella stand with, like, hard hat. It's held on by a stud, so it's not that easy to move. Two nice pink umbrellas. Again, it's a pretty decent design. Um, there's nice padding around here. The Central Park Cafe logo just outside. There is a bit of an outside, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, another really amazing sticker. I think it was a sticker, at least I can't quite remember. Is... If we can get some lighting in here. There we go. This sign here. For the Central Park Cafe list. We have Long Island Cream, Central Jolt, Fifth Avenue Brew, Miss Liberty Blend, NY Classic, Tim Pan Jav, Monica Monk, Muchak, I can't actually say that's what I'm dyslexic, so Broadway, can't read that, and Urban Tried Java. And I think this is such a cool little, you know, sticker because that's, that just adds so much detail that you don't normally get. And I can generally, like, if I had the money, I would buy another one of these, because that would be so good for just, like, a custom mock of anywhere. And then, of course, bringing it back around, there's this nice area here, which, once again, we'll look at individually. But before I look at, you know, this individually, and the main seating area, 
I think it's best that we take a walk outside the Central Park to see once again there's this nice, you know, roofing here to represent like the flooded, not flooded, the um, roof. I can't remember what you call it now. Not so good for right here, but you've got the Central Park there. You can't stand the figure here, actually. Where's, where's, where's 2021 Jimbo? You can't exactly, I mean, you can. You can actually maybe have, like, I'm not sure who will get this, but in the episode where Phoebe, where we kind of find out how Phoebe met them all, if we just have her, like, standing there looking in. We can do that, I guess. Around here is obviously the front, and again, I like the build for the side path here, how they kept it all, um, just nice and smooth. And you can have, of course, fit a character there. And of course, there's, um, one of Joey's many posters. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good build, and there's a little bin here, and you can actually squeeze a character here. You can make the park look very busy if you want, which is something I try not to do when I'm, like, putting it on display. I like it nice and, you know, cleaned. But anyway... That's the um, main cafe. I think we should take a look at Phoebe's little side build first. Normally, it's the bit where I clean up my setup and get everything moved, but there's simply not enough room anywhere to hold that with all the mess I've got on the floor, so I'll pop it out. This one's not made to be taken out as much. You can see it's got clips there, but I'm going to do it anyway. Again, nice snot technique with an amazing carpet. You can see there's this really nice build for a sofa. And again, you could fit... Multiple characters on here. I believe you can get two on this one. If I remember correctly, yeah. You can get two on here. Um, maybe three if you squeezed. Maybe three if you squeezed. Hold up. Can you get three on if you really squeeze? Okay. You can get three on if you really squeeze and they're not studded. That doesn't look very comfortable. But yeah, it's a pretty nice side build. And this is, of course, the area where Phoebe's normally sitting. Oh, I've broken off the um, studs. I, I'm I'm not placing the tripod anywhere. I'm actually moving it around today, so... Hmm. And yeah, you can see there's this pretty nice... You know, again, another build for a little pillar with some flowers. And of course, we could put this back on and slide it back on in. Not too much of a hassle to get half the stuff back in and out. Um, and yeah, you can straight up see, again, another table. Pretty nice build for a table there. And those two studs there can either be used if you want to have, you know, Phoebe be singing. Or there is an alternative option, which again, it's another side build, but it's pretty spectacular. Just in the, like, way it was built, and this is very difficult with, I really need to get a better setup, or maybe grow like a pair of hands, but yeah. It's a piano. It's the piano, sorry. And yeah, it's got a pretty nice sticker, or is it a tile? Not sure. Oh yeah, it's a sticker. And again, it's such a simple and yet nice build. Again, height comparison. Yeah, I'm gonna leave Bob there if you're wondering. Maybe Bob. Or is it Barry? Well, Barry Larry, it was one of the two. He has brothers. Um, yeah. You can have Gunter playing the guitar. Um, guitar. God, mate, Arison will kill me for saying that. Piano. And yeah, you can just... I mean, not very well designed for this. But you can have it placed, you know, right up against. Or there. However you want it. They, I believe there is actually a picture of it with it studded there. But I have no idea how they did that. And oh no... It's coming apart here. But yeah, that's that area. And of course, the main reason why we're all here. Is the cent... Oh, that noise is killing everyone. It's the, um, the seats. You know, the main area where I sit, where they sit. Again, an absolutely spectacular job with snot and studs not on top. And that's a pretty good carpet design. And of course, flipping it around, you can see the top side. Looks pretty good. And of course, there's this nice table. Which is clipped on there. And again, this is another really good build for a table. Which isn't too high. And, yeah. Some you know, stuff, I guess. Regular Lego City newspaper. 
Um, a pretty funny joke here. Um, if you get what that reserve sign is hinting at, you do. If you don't know what that reserve sign's hinting at, that's I can't do anything like that. And again, this set has so many good builds for chairs. Like classic Lego chair here. Nothing special. Gunter's the only one. I mean, the rest are back there, but <laughs> you guys are getting a look into my um abuse of Lego at the moment. Yeah, you could take him, see him there. Never really like this style of chair. Never will. It's just a bit too um. What's the word? Clunky. It's just not my style of chair from Lego. There's another table here, and again with these. These are spectacular. This is because the chairs in the corner where Joey and like Chandler normally sit. Some nice legs design, like implied legs. And this amazing back cushion design. Again, it's a sticker. And if we take Chandler, pop him on there, it looks pretty decent. And of course, there's two of them. Have the main thing here that I find amazing is this. The main orange couch that the girls normally sit on. This is such an amazing design. Like, oh, it's actually oddly spinnable as well. But yeah, this design, pretty sturdy, quite a few pieces, but you can fit, I believe you can get minimum, of, Phoebe won't go on because of her hair, well, that, that actually kind of sucks, Chandler let go for the laptop, you can get Chandler, say Police Inspector Gordon, and Ross, all sat on there, and it holds up pretty well. And again, that looks really comfortable, and it's not overly scaled. And again, oh, come on. I'm, again, I'm really sorry about all the blunders in this video. Um, haven't had much time today. I've retaken this way too many times, and I'm just really tired and not in a mood to retake. So, you guys get a one-take video, and you can see how bad it is and why I always do retakes. Oh, bugger. There we go. Of course, moving the Central Park Cafe back in. And, yeah, I took down the other two pillars, if you're wondering. Zooming out. Pull. And play again. Here's the calf, all put back together, mostly. How dare I? How dare I take out this sign? But, yeah, here's the calf, all back together. And there's actually a kind of funny joke here that Lego included. Um, two lights, either side. I want like two fake lights here, two real lights there, but yeah, um, two lights on the side, like that, to you know, show that there's filming, that they're not too hard to take off, so if you don't want them there, you could just pop them off like that. Personally, I don't mind them there, I, I generally think it's quite a clever build for these spotlights, that I might replicate one day when I eventually get around to doing my stage mock for the Beatles. But yeah, it's pretty clever build for the lights, and I think it just looks really good. It gives the impression that there's actually something more to this set. And yeah, with that out of the way, I guess it's time to get onto the figures. Now first up is Chandler. Is it Chandler? Yeah, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Not, um, not very good in... I, I've never understood how to pronounce his name. Of course, here he is. And yeah, I'd say he looks decently accurate. Because has light tan trousers, a black waistcoat with light blue, uh, misprinting there on, on the t-shirt for the collar area, like like it always does. We've got his laptop. What what does Lego hold these things together with? Yes, you cannot open this by the oh, it's clipped in. What? What the? Yeah, so here's the um, laptop. If you're wondering, there's nothing cool on the inside, just a couple of letters and stuff. Lego holds together with a clip, and that's very difficult to use. I never want to see it again. Um, and yeah, looks fairly accurate. I like the printing. Um, this torso could be used just for a regular civilian. Same with the hair, but, you know, it looks pretty good. His um, expression's very dorky, very stupid looking, but... It fits the actor and the character. I'm not saying he's stupid, but, you know. And, of course, spinning his hair and head round. 
because he's got a more, uh, hmm? Huh? Sort of face. And yeah. Pretty cool figure all around. And yeah. Really glad we got him in Lego finally. And let's move on to the next fig, shall we? Next up is Joey. For a second I forgot his name was I thought his name was Jason. Um he's got a pizza bag. A pizza. Um his man bag, black trousers, and a pretty decent torso print. It's just a red t-shirt, but it's got, I can't remember, can I get this? It's got this really nice printing on it. That would make it a great custom figure, like, you could make so many great custom figures. Again, this set comes with an abundance of really reusable, regular people torsos, and it's a shame we don't get more of these, like, regular torsos in, like, City. Like, these two people here have the most reusable sh shirts out of the lot, so yeah. And of course, he has a very cocky smile, which is... Half of the course. Um, Superman hairpiece. And a more chilled look. Like a how you do and sort of. But yeah. Pretty accurate figure. Very expressive. Which again just fits, you know, the figure. And who it's meant to represent. And if we reach back here. Um, yeah. They did a really accurate job. Um, you can, you can, if you really wanted to, you could have him just hold, looking at himself. Actually looks quite accurate to the figure, which I'm really impressed with. Let's move on to the next lad. Next up is Ross, and he has dark brown legs. And once again, just a super reusable t-shirt that fits the character. Fits the character, looks accurate, has a cup. Nice mold, by the way. A uh, pretty expressive face. Suits the character, nice black hair. Another expression, which that definitely looks like Ross. Um, yeah. Very expressive. Again, it just fits the character it's trying to be. Looks like him. Um, I actually started rewatching the Friends, and I don't particularly like Ross anymore. Like, I still find some of the jokes funny, but at this point, he's just sexist. So, yeah. Don't really like this figure any. You know, the great figure, but don't really like the character anymore. Um, uh, anyway, let's move on to the last bloke, though not a member of the Friends. None, none other than Rachel's secret admirer is Gunter. He's got a pretty unique, you know, tie with the different colours and the nice green shirt. And you don't see much of this character, but I do remember him being kind of chubby. So it's not very accurate in that regard. It's nice, you know, white hair, which is the character. A pretty good face. Looks very accurate to the figure. I mean, not the figure, the, you know, actor or whatnot. And around here, got a pretty happy face. This face I don't like because it just, like with Ross's one, it just you can tell it's Ross, same with Joey and all that. But this one just seems like a regular city person. And I really think they let him down like that. And anyway, let's move on to the um, last three minifigs, shall we? Next up is Monica Geller. Wait, did I get that right? I think I did, actually. And yeah, she's pretty accurate figure. Has her, um, I actually quite like this. She has the um, brown overalls. Which, take this off, you can see the printing goes right up for those overalls. And has just nice, you know, tan going right up. And I think it's really accurate and fits the figure. I really like this consistency from Lego. Um, nice white shirt and hands. And again, this is again why Gunter's just a really, let, like, a let down because he looks so regular. Is you can tell who it's meant to be. The face is expressive. It tells you all you need to know. It It's generally really good. Printing for the figure and just looks great. Um, I don't think the hair suits as much, especially like earlier on where it used to be shorter. I think I would have preferred something like the Black Widow hair for at least earlier in her life. But yeah, um, let's move on to the next girl. This is obviously, you know, Rachel. Duh. Uh, pink cup. Get out of the way. And yeah. Again, really expressive, just printing on the character of stars. Um, don't like the printing down here. Don't think it's consistent. Lego's never been good at printing on legs, especially not dark colours and, you know, keeping the consistency up. But a pretty good torso. And again, that face just fits the character, especially this hairpiece. And taking on that, yeah, it's accurate. Looks who it's meant to be. And I like the hair. Um, she does come with an accessory because, of course, she works at the Central Park Cafe. Which is this um, shield piece of a cup, which I've actually been using as a shield piece. So, yeah. 
um, for Wonder Woman. I actually don't think it's a shield piece, actually. I don't know what it's called. Um, if you guys know what this piece is called, let me know down below. Because I've been using it as a shield um, in other mocks. So, yeah. And, yeah. Um, that's Rachel. Time to move on to my favorite character. And here she is, my favorite character in Friends, and my favorite looking figure out of them all, Phoebe. Um, nice brown legs, which I really like. Like, I don't know why I'm saying that, actually. I like dark, dark brown legs. Um, I'm trying to pad out for one time here. Um, pretty nice guitar piece. Um, oh, it's got a bit of paint on it. No, it fell into the box. Fell into the box. No, 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 no. I retrieved it from the box of doom. Yeah, pretty nice piece. Um, definitely fits a character. But what I was saying is, I really like this torso. It's really good. Like, it's got nice, you know, gold, orange, green. It all comes together amazingly. Especially with the purple thrown in. It's just one of those torso prints that is amazing. And yeah... It adds to the character. Of course, she got her more happy, regular Phoebe face. And of course, this is her singing Smelly Cat, probably. And yeah, it's a pretty great figure overall. And again, I like this figure in the show, so... Not this figure, blah! I like this character in the show. God, you do this... You collect Lego for, like, most of your life, and you start referring to people as figures. But yeah, um, pretty great figure. Let's get on to the, um, you know, final verdict. And that is the Lego Friends Central Perk Cafe set review. Now, according to the final verdict, um, first up, figures already said, like, with the exception of Gunter, I was gonna give it a 10 out of 10, but Gunter, though, man. He just looks too common, like he's just an average, regular figure, and that's not fair on the actor or the character. So just for the pure disrespect, of, I love the way I'm going on about disrespecting Gunter also got him way off in the background, not even in focus. You know what? We're going to remedy this problem. We're going to remedy this problem. For the sheer disrespect of giving Gunter a regular face and nothing unique, and for the sheer disrespect to the character, um, they're going to lose one point. How dare they? Gunter's actually funny sometimes and is just trying to do his job and be himself, and everyone's dissing on him. Like, come on, guys. So, yeah. How dare Lego like, just give him a Plain old regular face. I'm going to deduct a point. So the set ends up with a pretty badass one. I mean, nine out of ten. That's not bad. Um, accuracy. I give it a ten out of ten. Honestly, I can't be bothered to sit here and just compare it all day. And I did rewatch pretty much forty minutes worth of just edited footage just so I can get a good look at the calf. And I think it's fairly accurate to what you see in the show. Of course, there's never going to be perfect. There are some inconsistencies here and there. But there's no point drilling into those. So I'll give it 10 out of 10. But accuracy. Design is getting 20 out of 10. Like, there are so many good things here that I'm going to retrieve the one point loss on the figures, put it back, and give it, I don't know, 20 points. I know my thing only goes up to 10, but I'm going to get 20 points. Because the snot techniques, the way they did the carpets, the way they did the couches, the way they did everything here is perfect and deserves a medal. So in the end, we're going to get 40 out of 30. Um, and yeah, that was a pretty amazing set. Flawless build. Loved every second of it. Next week, we're going to be looking at a box set. Yeah, got two brand new Lego sets that were actually got the box to look at as well. So I can finally pad some runtime. I'm the only one clapping here. Everyone hates it when I flipping pad. I actually know one of my subscribers, uh, one of my mates that subscribed. He hates me reviewing the boxes, so I don't know why. But yeah, we finally get some boxes to look at. Yay! Anyway, I've been Jace Briggs. Have a lovely day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.